Hi, I'm Charles M. James, and thanks for coming to my Facebook page, Charles M. James Birding. I have a real passion for birding and also photography, so I thought it would be a good idea to start a Facebook page where people can come and look at some of the pictures that I've taken, but also to get tutorials on how to improve your bird photography, and basically just discussions on anything around birding. Um, I also have a web page where you can go and see more of my photo galleries at 3cmedia.net. If you like what you see on my Facebook page, please hit the like button. Now I'm going to do a tutorial. I think the first one I want to do is on shutter speed because a lot of people have been asking me why are their pictures blurry. A lot of times the pictures are blurry because they don't use a high enough shutter speed. So let's go do a tutorial and take a look at how you can make sharper pictures. Take care, and if you like my page, please hit the like button. Okay, let's get right to this tutorial on shutter speed to try to improve the clarity and sharpness of your pictures. I'm going to use some pictures that I took from uh, Governor's Bridge Wildlife Area in Bowie, Maryland. Uh, I was taking pictures of a uh, hummingbird moth, which is a really strange looking animal, but they're very beautiful. They're actually a moth that has a, adapted to look like a hummingbird. Um, they move very fast, and I thought this would be a good one because you've got a lot of elements that are moving all at the same time. You've got a, an insect that's flying, and his wings are fluttering at a different speed than the body is moving. They hover a lot, and they have a lot of moving parts with their tongue and their antenna. So um, this would be a good illustration for how shutter speed can stop motion blur. And motion blur is one of the things that makes your pictures look like they aren't sharp, even though the autofocus system is actually locking in at the right spot. So on this first picture that we took, let's go to the info. You go up to file, you come down to file info. We'll go to camera data. Okay, I use my 7D Mark II for this one. And I use my... Um, 400 f 5.6 Canon L lens for this um, this series of pictures. You can see the aperture value is full open at 5.6, and the reason I use the f 5.6 that's the um, the small the um, largest opening that I have on this lens. It's uh, f 5.6, so that's the place where it's going to let in the uh, most amount of light. And I shoot at this setting a lot when I'm shooting birds and insects because by having it all the way open you get a very shallow depth of field which means that only part of the bird or, or insect that's going to be in focus is the part where the um, the exact um, camera is focusing and then everything else in front and everything else behind is going to be blurry. Uh, you hear pro photographers talk about bokeh a lot and bokeh is when you get that creamy, smooth background because it's out of focus. And you look down here, and this is something that's really important. Uh, most people know about the uh, relationship to shutter speed and aperture opening. But the other thing that's really um, important to know about is the ISO, or some people say ESO, speed rating on your camera. And these ratings go back to the time when we had film, where different kinds of film would give you more light capacity but uh, for this discussion all you really need to know is that the higher the ISO rating the more light that's allowed to process in your camera now one thing that happens with raising these ISO there's no free lunch if you go to a really high ISO rating then your pictures are going to start to see more camera noise and that noise is just because they're adding gain so you don't want your pictures to be grainy. So for most part, you want to keep your ISO setting as low as possible without introducing noise, but with being able to give you enough light. So now that you've seen those settings, the other thing I'm going to show you is flash. And it says the flash did not fire. So what you're seeing is the exposure from the camera with the aperture of f5.6 a shutter speed of 1 60th of a second and the ISO of 640. So now you can see in this picture that the bird basically was still but his wings were fluttering. 
the flower was still. You can see that the flower is pretty much in focus where the uh, location of the bird. You can see a ton of detail in this picture for such a small bird. And this is a 100% crop. You can see detail in his antenna, in his head. You can see good the eyes, the uh, legs. But you'll notice that the wings are blurred because 1 60th of a second isn't fast enough to stop the wings from moving. And that's one of the reasons why your pictures may not be sharp. If you have a slow shutter speed, then a lot of times the shutter speed will cause the image to look blurred, either because the image moves slightly or you move the camera slightly. And that's very easy to do when you don't use a tripod. So let's go to another picture. I think this is a good picture. If you wanted a picture where the subject had a little motion blur, then you could use a slower shutter speed and you can see the type of effect that you would get where the body is still very sharp. So let's go to the next picture. We'll do the same kind of analysis. You can see again, the um, flower is very sharp. You can see a lot of sharpness, a little less motion blur in the wings. So let's go up to the file detail. Everything else is the same, but this time the ISO is 3200. So 3200 is a, a very extreme ISO. And so I, I very rarely would shoot at this uh, ISO setting, but I did on this day because I wanted to see how much noise it will introduce into the picture. So you can see that the um, the shutter speed was one five hundredth of a second. So let's go back and analyze this picture. Again, you can see it's very sharp in here, but you can still see that motion blur. And so this brings me to the rule of thumb. <clears throat> the rule of thumb with shutter speed is that your shutter speed should be at least twice as fast as the focal length on your lens. And because this is a, a 40, 400 millimeter lens, to get the shutter speed twice the speed, you'd have to shoot at 1 800th of a second or above if you really wanted to freeze the action. Now the other thing that happens is because this picture is at 66%, it's very difficult to see the noise. But if you were going to print this at a high range, if you come up to 100% crop, now you can see a lot of noise in the background in this picture. And this is one of the reasons why people suggest that you buy fast glass or glass with a really um, low focal length, like 2.8 uh, or 1.8. Because by this being a 5.6, I have to move up to a very, very high ISO number of 32, and that introduces a lot of noise. So even though this is a pretty decent picture, if you were going to print it like 5 by 6, if you tried to make it a big print, uh, 8.5 by 11 or anything larger, you would start to see a lot of noise. So that's one of the disadvantages of having a high ISO rating, even though it will allow you to have a faster shutter speed, it will introduce noise into your pictures. So now let's go to the next picture. We'll bring this one up to 100%. We go to the um, file info here. You can see that again, <clears throat> the shutter speed on this picture is 1 500th of a second uh, the ISO is 3200 uh, same picture again let me go to another one go to the zoom tool bring this up to a hundred percent okay and you can see in this picture that the picture is very sharp on the bird you can see a lot of detail in the tail feathers, but still a lot of motion blur in the wings. Let's go to the info. On this one, you can see that it's 1 800th of a second. So in this example, even though it followed the rule of thumb, it still wasn't a fast enough shutter speed to actually freeze the motion of the wings. 
but you can see that the rest of the bird is in very very sharp detail and look here at the detail in the antenna this is an extremely sharp picture for a subject that's so small you can see here that the ISO setting was at 1000 and 1000 is still in the acceptable range you see very little color noise in the dark sections which is very good and the aperture value was moved up for a proper exposure of 7.1 which was going to also make the picture a little sharper so you can see in the uh, detail in the flower now instead of just the parts of the flower that were on the same plane as the bird are in focus but also a little bit more in front and a little bit more behind and that comes because the aperture value was opened up to um, uh, close down to 7.1 instead of 5.6 so you can see that <clears throat> this is a very sharp picture and again the reason one of the biggest reasons is because the shutter speed has moved up to one eight hundredth of a second but still not fast enough to actually stop the fluttering of the wings so now we're going to try to prove the point by moving up to a very high shutter speed and we're going to go to your details again you can see the ISO is still at 1000 but this time the shutter speed is up to one one thousandth of a second so you can see in this picture let's bring it up to 100 percent crop you can see that the bird is in very sharp focus see the detail in the white sections because the aperture was at 5.6 you can see that the flower isn't as much in focus in the front but where the bird is it's very much in focus look at the detail on the tongue and the wings are actually stopped so this is a very good picture and shows the effect of shutter speed that the effect of shutter speed has on stopping that motion but also it gets rid of the motion blur caused by movement in the subject I use this for a reason. The flutter of the wings on this moth are so fast, so you really need to be good with your technique and your shutter speed to actually stop it to where you don't see the motion. And now I'm going to show you a little trick. A lot of people ask me why I always carry flash, and this next picture is an example of why I, I like to take flash out into the um, field. <clears throat> a lot of times the birds are back into trees, they're in the shadows, and even on a sunny day, you'll get a lot of shadows cast on the bird depending on where he is in the tree or in the thicket. So by having flash, you can use a little fill light to um, open them up a little bit and cut down on the shadows. Let's bring this one up to 100%. And this is the sharpest picture in the group. <clears throat> you can see that the, fl the flower isn't as sharp, but the subject is tack sharp. You can look at the antenna, the best detail of all the pictures. You can actually see pollen on the uh, <clears throat> tongue of the moth, the detail in his eye. You can see a lot of color in his eye. And then the hairs on the body and in the tail, and the wings are frozen. So this is a very good shot. So you would expect that the shutter speed would be extremely high on this photo. So let's go to the file info and take a look. Now when you look, you see that the f-stop was 6.3, which is going to give you a little more depth of field to help sharpen the picture. The ISO was at 640, which is in the acceptable range without giving a lot of um, noise in the picture. But if you look at the shutter speed, the shutter speed was only 1 one twenty-fifth of a second. And so that's the slowest shutter speed of all of the pictures. So it seems like it contradicts what I'm trying to tell you. But one thing that you have to look at, and you come over here, and it says flash, flash fired. The reason this picture is so sharp is because I hit it with the flash. Now, there's a little explanation that goes along with this. People think that the only way that you can stop motion is with shutter speed. But there's another trick that a lot of pro photographers use, and it's the duration on your flash can be set to a very short duration. If you have a flash that has adjustment in it and you can take the power level down, then the more you take the power level down, the shorter the duration of your flash. 
And you can get your flash to have a duration as short as one eight thousandth of a second. And so what I did for this picture is I took the duration of the flash down so that it would be very quick. And when I set the camera up, I set it up so that without the flash, the entire picture would be dark, meaning I eliminated the ambient light. So when I used the flash and the flash fired, I used the shortness of the duration to act like a very high shutter speed. And that's how I was able to catch a very sharp picture without having to use a high shutter speed. I use my flash duration. So this is a, a pro trick, but for the most part, if you really wanna have sharp, tack sharp pictures, you have to make sure that your camera is auto focusing on the subject, directly on the subject. And I would suggest you use single point focus as opposed to using the focus on all of your focus points. In most cameras today, the center point is a better focusing because it's a cross type and it will give you sharper pictures. The next thing is to make sure that your shutter speed is high and try to get your shutter speed at least twice the focal length of your lens. But if you can even go faster on your shutter speed, it will make your pictures look more sharp. And then the last thing is if you're in a real demanding situation and you want to get a really, really high shutter speed, the only way that you could probably do it would be to turn the ISO up. If you turn the ISO up, it's going to make your pictures grainy and noisy. And so that's why you can take a flash and use the little flash trick I told you about to use the flash duration to act like shutter speed and give you a tack sharp photo. I hope that this made sense to you and that it was helpful. This is uh, one of the reasons why you see the pros get such really sharp pictures because they have really good equipment, fast lenses, but with good technique, putting your camera on a tripod and using some of the tricks I told you today, you should see the sharpness of your pictures go up. Thanks for tuning in to Charles M. James Birding. And if you like what you heard today, please like my page. Take care.